Hello and welcome to Heavy Rotations. And last week, as uh, well, this week, as promised, we discussed last week that we did our first ever ten dollar challenge. And um, maybe what we should do first, Trevor, is cut away to Hi Fi Hits, and uh, we'll yeah. get to meet Joe, who's the owner of Hi Fi Hits, and uh, we'll kind of show you what we did as far as walking around and looking at some of the albums and it'll give you a chance to check out the record store. We even enjoyed some beverages because they have beverages there, which we is did. very cool for a yep. record store and, to have uh, beverages. We got to thank Joe for being so hospitable. He was really cool yeah. about it. We kind of yeah. showed up. We had, I told him before we were thinking about filming an episode there and uh, he was really accommodating and you'll meet him in the video. So before we go any further, Let's cut away to that, and then we'll come back and we'll discuss uh, what we got each other. Hello, everybody. It is uh, episode number 10 of Heavy Rotations. We are outside. Uh, it's myself, Tom Jennings, and my son, Trevor Jennings. And we are here at Hi-Fi Hits in lovely scenic Williamsville, New York. Now, we love Hi-Fi Hits. Uh, Trevor and I have decided to come up with, because this is technically our 10th episode, is it not? This is. So we're gonna give each other 10 bucks. Uh, we've got uh, 10 minutes to find each other an album. And we are calling it the $10 challenge. So $10, 10 minutes, we're gonna wander around the store, look for an album, buy it for the other person, head back to his house in Akron, listen to it, and then we're gonna decide who did the better job of picking out the album for somebody else. So come on in, we're walking into Hi-Fi Hits right now. more for me and less for you. It's a little bit too expensive. We got some Merle Travis. I know he likes his country, but I think for the first one, I'm gonna have to go. Uh, let's check some tragically hip. It's all a little pricey. I took forever to was the Who. Let's see if there's one in here he doesn't have. Who? Mick Vicker. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if he'd like this or not. There's actually a couple of pretty good tunes on this one. Oh, yeah. Well, considering what we talked about the last show with Jack, baked beans, yeah, I think this is the way to go. All right. So while we got you on video, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about Hi-Fi Hits and... Uh, well, Hi-Fi Hits has been open since August 27, 2019. We sell new and used vinyl records, new and used CDs, cassettes. We got posters, uh, band shirts. We got a bar in the back with beer and wine. Did you say there's a bar in the back with beer and wine? That is correct. Well, you know what I think got our next, taps. you know where I think our next stop might be. That's right. That's where Maybe we should Maybe we'll go. have a beer. What do you think, Trevor? Yeah. All right, awesome. We got a entertainment platform. It's a little on hold right now, but we're hoping to get back over there. Yep, it's in the far corner. And we also like, have blankets. Look yeah, at that. 
<laughs> yeah, very cool stuff. Got even gift cards for uh, purchase, uh, you know, maybe Father's Day or something. Father's Day is coming up. Record store day, uh, record store day drop number one this year is uh, June 12th. Number two is uh, July 17th. All right. We already pre-ordered everything, so we're hopeful we get a lot of stuff. Yep, like that Triumph uh, box set. Yes, Hope we got that I coming. I ordered some of those. All right, good. That one's real limited, so I'm hoping to get yeah. at least something. We got sticks coming on that one too. Sticks, I ordered sticks, and of course, uh, Grateful Dead, we ordered a lot yep. of those. Um, there's a Christina, uh, not Christina, uh, Aria Grande, we've been getting a lot of calls for, so hopefully we can get those. Well, you definitely haven't gotten calls from us for that. <laughs> <laughs> we just try to cover the wide spectrum when we do it. <laughs> Wasn't that fun? <laughs> it was, yeah. <laughs> this this is that part in the video where we act like we just watched what you did, but we didn't. No. Did we? Well, we've seen it, though. Yeah, we, we have. We lived it. Yeah. <laughs> About one week ago. About one week ago. Uh, but thanks again to Joe over at Hi-Fi Hits. So, um, you want to go first or you want me to go first? You can go first. <laughs> okay. So, this week, um, we, as I said, we did the Hi-Fi Hits, not hi fi hits challenge. We're going to have to. The $10 challenge. Oh, challenge. I mean, no, just keep it. Yeah, let's it's just keep fine. going. We're not going to edit. It's this fine. is informal. Yeah. Um, uh, we didn't mention who we are either, what our show is. Heavy rotation. You did. You said it at the beginning. I did? Yeah, okay. You did. That's fine. So, um, and I do also, speaking of thanks, we should thank the people that have commented and subscribed and yeah. everything like that. So We've gone up. We're almost at 20 subscribers. We so. did. And somebody mentioned on one of the vinyl Facebook groups that the show was very wholesome, which I thought yeah. was a really nice comment. Someone also um, told me that Brent Cowles is Brent Coles, <laughs> which I knew directly after <laughs> filming. The worst part is, is his new album is called It's Coles, and I was like, damn. So, so Brent, if you're out there, we apologize for yeah. massacring your name, but we've, <laughs> we've done worse. Yes. So um, it's kind of like all those lyrics they used to mess up as a kid. He did. <laughs> goes yes. the same well, way. He used to do uh, the one I remember the most was "Dirty Deeds" and the Thunder Chief. <laughs> I also had "Idio" killed the video. Idio, so. Idio. You're like Idio, Idio killed. We're like, yeah. who is Idio? So it's just a thing. Don't take it personally, Brent. <laughs> Don't. Yeah. <laughs> and "Dirty Deeds" and the Thunder Chief. Yeah. I don't know who the Thunder Chief is. It's a uh, Chief uh, of Thunder. Chief obviously. of Thunder, of course. Yes. And uh, his "Dirty Deeds" are thunderous. So, uh, speaking of uh, albums that we got for each other, so uh, I decided to take kind of the easy route, and I bought you an album by The Who. Who? Who? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, not to be confused with the World Health Organization, <laughs> nice. which is also Who. Who. Yeah. Uh, this is The Who. So, actually, this week, who's on first? Uh, I don't know that whole routine, so... <laughs> All you would have to say is who. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, and then maybe we could have Guess Who on second. I don't know. Oh, it's just yeah. two. And then I remember you saying that little thing all the time, but I don't know it well enough. So, uh, this is called The Who Sellout. One of the reasons I, I picked The Who is it's a sentimental favorite because when Trevor was a young man and he loves to tell the story, and we've, we've had some debate as to whether he actually, he actually encouraged me to get drunk or if he simply took advantage of my semi drunken state when he convinced me to go on the internet. Buy my first scalped tickets to a concert mm -hmm. at a paltry hundred dollars a piece, which at the time I didn't have. I took advantage of the drunkness. I'll just admit it. <laughs> so for his birthday, I got him tickets to see The Who mm -hmm. in uh, Hamilton, Ontario. Was it just The Who, or was that The Who does Tommy? Or Roger no, Daltrey? Roger Daltrey does Tommy. Was was when Another we saw occasion. It. Yes, was we this, saw that one. This later. is the one in Hamilton, though, right? Hamilton when we were was like a. Through and there's fire spitting up everywhere. Yes, Hamilton, Looks Ontario. Like city. <laughs> 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 then you take a right turn, you're in a city. It's like the wildest no, it's, thing in the world. It's like uh, I don't know. Hamilton, Ontario is, and and if you live there, uh, I feel sorry for you, <laughs> because Canada as a whole is such a beautiful country, but there's this section of Hamilton. That just looks like the nether worlds. I mean, yeah. it looks like hell. I feel like it's like Gotham, like just yeah. in the middle of like full battle. Like all the villains are out. 
and everything's yeah. torn down. <laughs> yeah, like I mean, if 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 the Joker and Riddler jumped out at us, uh, that would have wouldn't have surprised me at all. But it yeah. was a nice little arena. It's not. It wasn't a quick, quick or too bad of a trip here from um, the Buffalo area, and it was a good show. We had seats that were really close, but then everybody around us stood up, and they were all taller than <laughs> us. So we tried to stand on the aisle. The security guard kicked us out. Eventually, went up top. We eventually so we had to go up top show. so we could see the show. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it was funny because there were guys, like, standing there smoking weed with the security car. <laughs> he didn't make them move. Yeah. But we were just standing on the end of the aisle trying to get a view. By the last song, we ended up scooching up forward, though. We just did, yes. we just went for it. Yeah, we did. We did. We were one of those guys, you know, yeah. who, at the end of the show, decided to sneak up as close as we could. So we were about... Successfully. The, yeah, we were, we were in the front row for at least the last the two encore, songs. I think. The whole encore, we just yeah. said, all right, whatever. You know, if we get kicked out, at least it's the last two songs. Yeah, and we did it. And then uh, we waited out back to see if we could meet him, and they just drove by in their, yep. their black. We got to see him in their separate limousines, yep. Pete and Roger. Yeah, they didn't wave or acknowledge that we even existed. But we got to stand close to them for yeah. a little while. Yeah, yeah. Um, so this album is one of the earlier ones in their career. It's noted for having some jingles and things like that. And actually, the timing's pretty good. I think you'll find with record albums when they are about to come out for re-release, and this one's, it's got to be an anniversary or something. I, I think for Record Store Day, it was either the last Record Store Day or the one coming up. I'm not certain. I, mm -hmm. I heard about it, that they are re-releasing this one. I just saw this at Revolver Records So it must have been yesterday. last Record Store Day then so, that they yeah, re-released I mean, it. Okay. Um, I know there's a colored vinyl version coming out as well, and then like one of those massive CD packages that has all the outtakes and everything like that oh, on cool. it. But usually when these types of albums get reissued, you'll start to find some economical copies of the older versions, because I think people get the newer version and then they trade in their older copies uh, for a new cleaner copy. So we got this one under the $10. I think it was... It was like 6 bucks. Yeah, it was like 6 bucks, and you listened to it. Any problems? Crackles? No, no, so it's not a perfect... I mean, the album's yeah. literally in perfect shape. The, I mean... Even the out, outer sleeve, there's a little bit of record wear. Yeah. Kind of on the, out, the little ring, but that's really it. I mean, it looks a little beaten, but yeah. to me it's fantastic. Well, I think I think record collectors fall into a couple of different categories. Some of them are really into the whole collecting aspect of it and the different editions and things like that, and other ones just buy them to listen to. I mean, I tend to fall into the listener category for the most part. That's not to say that I don't buy collector's editions of things, but... Um, yeah, I definitely I'm, fall into both. You know, some albums I have just the collector's edition. I have two copies of some albums actually, where it's like the newer re-release and then the one I listen to more. <laughs> so, so I, I, I mean, obviously this worked for you, right? Yeah. Oh no, I loved it. I, I thought this was a little more of a kind of like a psychedelic version of the Who. Like they got a little, little out there, and then. I heard that the, the ads that they had was all because of the whole pirate radio because mm -hmm. they weren't getting airplay. So they, they used to have these ships that were on the ocean that would just like stream their music to people so they could actually listen to it. So it was either, I, I was asking you, I don't know if it was a real ad or a mock ad. Yeah, I but don't, it, I don't it had know. something to do with that at least. Um, I forgot the full story about it, but and this I is pre really cool. Tommy, so I think it was when they were again kind of sort of experimenting with the whole concept of doing something to tie all of the songs together in an album format like more a so concept. than yeah, yeah, yeah. It's definitely a larger concept. I I thought it was fantastic front to back, and I I, I just love the cover art. They have all these absurd like ads, and then they have these little sayings underneath all of them, and then of course you got the. Uh, the baked beans that we yep. were talking about with Jack. Yeah, yeah, the baked beans that that, and that inspired the scene in Tommy. And I guess Tommy, mm -hmm. it's uh, baked bean suds and chocolate or something that came out. I don't remember, but the baked beans had to do with this particular cover. So, you know, interesting yeah. stuff. So I, I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. It's uh, I, I only have a few Who albums right now. I have Tommy mm -hmm. and uh, Who's Next, and now I have this and. Uh, I didn't know how this was going to sound. I was pleasantly surprised at how it is. I really liked how it wasn't like a Who rock album. It was kind of a more out there album in a very good way. And I've always wanted this one since I kind of saw the album art. I remember, yeah. I remember peeking at when we'd watch documentaries about the Who and stuff, and I was like, that's an interesting album. I kind of want to check it out. So well, I said, I and you've liked the Who for a long time. I mean, I've got, uh, I don't know, I, my favorite album, I think Who album is always going to be Who's Next. I mean, it's yeah, just it's one of classic. those albums that there's just not a bad note on it. I mean, it's just so incredible. Right. Uh, and then, of course, Tommy Quadrophenia. I mean, you know, I've got, yeah, I've got Tommy Quadrophenia. I've got Kids Are All Right soundtrack. I need to get Quadrophenia. Face Dances. Next. It's hard. I've got a pretty, 
sizable chunk of uh, Who records. But what's interesting is I don't have any of the earlier stuff, like the pre-Tommy. I don't wow. like I don't own a copy of this. Really? Yeah, but you nice. do. I do because of you. So if you're not looking when I leave today, maybe I'll want a copy uh, of it. How's I think that? we'll just put this away now. <laughs> and move on to the next one. All right. So uh, tell me where and, and why you picked up this beautiful piece of eph ephemera? Ephemera? I don't know. Well, I was cruising through the um, compilation section. It was separated by 70s, 80s, different eras and stuff. So I, I just... I wasn't sure what to get you, so I saw 70s, and I didn't like 70s music, and I happened to be in the compilation section, and I just, I just pulled it out. It didn't have a title on it or anything. I didn't know what it was, so I opened it up, and um, I saw Todd Runger on there, so that's kind of almost 100% the reason why I got it for you. <laughs> but then I saw some of the other artists on here, like Doobie Brothers, um, that I thought you'd really like, and I just thought it'd be kind of an interesting thing. Like, I wasn't sure if you would have ever seen it, because I've never seen anything like this. Um, so I kind of just went on a whim and thought maybe it'd be like a cool like collector's thing or you'd at least enjoy it because Todd was on there. So, I mean, didn't have a whole lot going for me on it, but, you know, I guess there's a, quite of a history about it. Mm -hmm. You were kind of giving me more of it because, and when I when I went up to, um, to the counter for Hi-Fi, a um, gentleman was telling me kind of the whole history behind it too and letting me know what the, the title was and everything and kind of has a cool background to it if you wanted to share. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because I I was familiar with these, This it's actually part of a series of albums, and uh, I was familiar because Todd Rundgren's on them. I've never owned any of them. Uh, there's a lot, there's been some talk about them in the Todd Rundgren discussion groups, and um, I'm actually now determined to get all the <laughs> compilations with Todd on them, because they're fairly, <laughs> sorry, they're fairly sorry, cheap. Tracy. <laughs> yeah, sorry, it's, it's an apology to my I, wife. I sparked a, uh, sparked a new thing for you. Yeah, there's five of them, but I mean, some of the ones that he's on, he's on it with uh, Jerry Garcia's solo work. Oh, there's wow. some Jimi Hendrix stuff on there. That's cool. Um, I mean, you mentioned the ones that are on here, and these are all the different artists and everything. You know, you got some of you, some of them are pretty iconic, you know, like John Denver you could pick mm -hmm. out. And, uh, of course, it's a horrible picture of Todd. <laughs> he but, doesn't have the skunk yeah, hair. That's kind of the, how I know it's, it's Definitely Todd. Mac Davis and, uh, you know, Tom Jones. I mean, a lot of, of, of guys from the Warner Brothers label. And so what these albums were called is this particular album is called Supergroup. And it was part of what Warner Brothers called the Lost Leaders series. So the concept was is you'd come up with these promo albums. If you look at like a 1970s Warner Brothers album, the inner sleeve a lot of times would sell these things for three bucks. Hmm. And uh, there's one called Limo that's out there. There's one, one, another one called Looney Tunes and Merry Melodies. There's one called Meat. Meat. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's about So it's a Warner meat. Brothers thing, though. Then how did he yeah. get on it being part of Bearsville Records? Uh, that's an excellent question, Trevor. <laughs> you have been paying attention to your father. Yes. Uh, actually, Bearsville was uh, distributed by Warner. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Uh, Bear Bearsville would be called a subsidiary. So, yeah, like, yeah. Meatloaf was on technically on a label called Cleveland International, but Cleveland International was tr distributed by Epic. So you'll see that a lot of times where an artist will sign to a smaller label, but there'll be a larger label that'll either, you know, be in charge of the distribution or there'll be a relationship with um, the smaller label and the larger label. So Warner would have an interest in Todd's music selling because they sell more units. They're distributing it. They get a piece of the pie. Yeah. yeah. Um, and actually, in his uh, later, the later part of his career, when he left Bearsville, he signed with Warner Brothers proper, and recorded for them. Wow. So Warner was kind of known for trying to nurture some different artists and whatnot. So basically, they would cull tracks from their catalog and slap it on these cheaper albums, knowing that they were going to lose money on the the double albums and the compilations in the hopes that maybe you listen to the album and let's say you didn't know who Todd Rundgren was. You heard a Todd Rundgren tune, you go, wow, that song's pretty cool. I think I'll check out more by Todd Rundgren. Yeah. Um, well, I used to I used to find a lot of my bands from compilations like in the Vans Warped Tour. Yeah. I mean, I think there's probably 10 or 20 bands that I discovered just from the those compilations. Plus there was a Hellcat Records, which is a punk label that used to do a compilation. Like compilations used to be a huge you know, way of discovering bands. So it's kind of cool that there's, you know, an older version of it and yeah. something with Todd on it. I think that I would say probably the modern uh, 
the modern way they do it may be like uh, like sort of a Pandora yeah. or playlisting, you know. Because if you're putting in Todd Rundgren as your main artist, it'll give you other artists you may not know, no. but they think you might like. And then you'll set like a Spotify playlist or, you know. But, you don't, yeah, you don't see the actual physical product where they hand it out with, with compilations. But I, yeah. but I agree. I think, you know, the thing is if you figure if you find one song that really stands out, you go, oh, you know, I want to check out more. I, I mean, mm -hmm. I, I mean, how else do you how do you really discover new artists? Recommendations from a friend, right? Mm -hmm. uh, catching them in concert, maybe as an opening act, or yep. just taking a chance on the ticket yep. at a larger festival or something like that. Uh, and you know, again, this was just another vehicle. I mean, you don't really have radio as much anymore. Uh, there are some there are some satellite radio stations that'll push stuff out, but this was an interesting model, and I think they did like twenty or thirty of them. I know Todd's on like five of them, but some of the cuts on them are very interesting. And what's nice, too, is that they didn't just stick, they don't just put singles on here. A lot of the songs that are on here are uh, album cuts, a little bit more obscure. Okay. So, And I think they might have done that so that, you know, like, I don't know if this has ever happened to you, but sometimes you get an album because you like one song and then the rest of the album just kind of sucks, or at least <laughs> in your own opinion, it kind of sucks. Um so maybe that was their thought too, is that they'd give something that was representative of what the artist is about. And then if you do go out to seek the rest of their music, you won't have some kind of shock like, oh, you know, they don't sound anything like their their hits, you know? Yeah, are the other five records with Todd songs, are they all stuff you already own? Are they all on other stuff? Or is it kind of stuff that you're trying to get because you don't have it? Um, I own all of the songs that are on the other albums, but I'm just very intrigued by some of the other songs that are on there i liked okay. when i listened to this it was interesting i didn't realize that i would like it as much as i did because i'm i tend not to like multi-artist artist compilations unless i'm like at you know working and maybe doing a vinyl night or something and mm -hmm. I, it's something you could put on and not have to think about but in terms of like listening experiences i really enjoy the uh, the album a, as an album mm -hmm. i mean i don't I don't mind greatest hits packages, but you know they, they have to be really good for me to like them. Um, but for the most part, I just really like a good, well constructed album. Mm -hmm. But I found, I was like, wow, you know, I was listening to this stuff, and as much as I didn't know some of it, there were some songs that I hadn't heard in a long time, which I really enjoyed hearing again. Because you know, a lot of times a song, especially in the 1970s, is if a song hit, let's say, 45 or 50 on the chart. Um, it's not going to be something that's still appearing on classic rock stations. They're only playing the stuff that hit the top five. So it would be songs that you would have heard, but they're not necessarily still part of the, you know, the, the, the fabric of, of radio. I, I think about a song like there was a, you know, I know we always talk about Todd Runger, or at least I do. <laughs> but, but you saw that, was that tune, Break, or the show Breaking Bad? Yeah. So the final song on Breaking Bad was a song by Badfinger. It was actually produced by Todd Rundgren and it's wow. called Baby Blue, right? Mm -hmm. So that's a song that doesn't get a lot didn't get a lot of radio play. It was popular back in the day. It's the last song in the end of Breaking Bad. It goes back on the charts. A because I think people heard it for the first time and thought it was kind of cool, mm -hmm. but B because I think that there were other people kind of like me that were like, "Oh dude, totally forgot about that song. I loved that song." But it's not something you necessarily seek out. Right. So that's why I think that's where I'm kind of thinking of maybe, and these albums are cheap. I mean, I've, I've looked them up on Discogs and whatnot, so it'll yeah, just kind of like give me something to look for in the Three record. or four bucks. Yeah. Yeah, so they're good albums. You'll see this one out there. I, I was out at a record store today, and um, it sounds like I go to record stores every day, probably because <laughs> I do. And uh, I saw another copy of this today as well. So they're out there, folks. If you want to get them, uh, pick them up. And I, as I said, you won't be disappointed. If nothing else, it's just a good record to put on if you're having a family get-together. Yeah. And Did you enjoy listening to the whole thing? You know, A to... It's two records. Yeah. A to D. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it's... I mean, it's very 70s kind of disco-oriented. Um, cool. there's, there's some other styles on it. It's not... You know, that's the thing about Warner is that Warner wasn't necessarily a rock it, uh, label. And in 1977, disco was really starting to dominate the charts and you can hear that kind of funk and disco prevalence on this particular album interspersed with you know some of the classic rock and some of the and some of the funk and all that stuff and 
I thought it was uh, I thought it was a great time capsule nice. from the era. And uh, you I was like your top three songs off this thing. Right? Oh my goodness! This is <laughs> I knew you were going to put me on the spot. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I I'll know them as soon as I see them. Yeah. Um. Da, 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 da. Let Your Love Flow by the Bellamy Brothers was a song that I had completely forgotten about. Uh, it's like, let your love flow. You know, that's an amazing song. Uh, the Doobie Brothers, Rio, that's kind oh, of that's a, cool. that's a little bit more of an obscure song. It's not one that you hear very often. And uh, there's a uh, Seals and Crofts song on here, Get Closer as well. But, yeah, nice. definitely the... Uh, the Bellamy Brothers and oh, the George Benson Breezin. It's an instrumental song, and George Benson. It was funny when I first heard it. I actually thought it was uh, Spyro Gyra, <laughs> and uh, George Benson just has these great, really funky jazz instrumentals. And he he did sing on a few songs. So you know, when I see George Benson, I almost expect to hear him sing because he's a very distinctive singing voice. But I forgot that he also had some very distinctive instrumentals. And that one, that one there. I'd heard it a million times. I didn't know the name of it, uh, and I was like, "Oh wow, you know." And and again, when I heard it, heard it on radio or something in the past, I always thought it was Spyro Gyra. So I actually learned that it was not Spyro Gyra. It was indeed George Benson. Nice. So yeah. What about you? What were your first? No, you didn't listen to yeah, it. Yeah, I didn't yet. listen to this one. <laughs> <laughs> but that's all I got. I did. Uh, I don't know. We can do a quick mention just just to tell you, like just quick finds today. I found this for three bucks. I just love me some colored vinyl. This is uh, Roger Daltrey's McVicker. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to talk a lot about the album because I haven't listened to it yet. I mean, it's, it's Daltrey was in a film called McVicker. There's a song on here that I really like called Free Me. And all the guys from The Who play on it that were alive at the time, Moon is Dead. But, uh, man, I just I love when you just are running through some cheapo record bins and you find an album that's cheap and looks good and... If it skips uh, for three bucks, I'm not too worried about it because it's pretty. Yeah. So that's the whole point of ten dollar challenge. Yeah. Ten dollar challenge. All right, and then uh, we got a couple of guests coming up. Uh, hopefully, Steve Hillebrand next week. We got Greg Juke coming up as well to talk about some King Crimson, and uh, Josh Kogavan. I was gonna say, don't you have someone play some songs? Josh Kogavan has agreed to come down here and play some music for us on the couch. And of course, if you're going to be on the couch. <laughs> Well, got to talk about records. You got to bring a record with you as well. Yeah. So, anything else you want to cover, Trevor, before we wrap this baby up? I don't think so. I mean, thanks again to Hi-Fi Hits for letting us kind of do their, do our thing there. It yeah. Was super nice. They were super nice. I love spending my money there. Yeah. Even if my wife doesn't <laughs> like me spending my money there. Well, yeah, That's, your car always ends up there. You're it does. Like, my car <laughs> automatically turns into Hi-Fi Hits. Yeah. It's sort of a running joke in the family. So, mm -hmm. all right. Well, very cool. Again, please subscribe. Please share. Um, as always, special thanks to our, our newest... Uh, did Baxter make it into the show today? Uh, he's here. He's, ha he's chilling with us today. Our special guest. Uh, we're going to keep Baxter in the show as long as Baxter... <laughs> Likes as long as we can afford it. I mean, until his agent, uh, Meredith, negotiates a contract and, and prices him out of the market, we'll, uh, we'll keep him in the show. And, of course, our camera person, gaffer, executive producer, assistant ex executive producer... Best boy, best girl, key grip, <laughs> what? Meredith Snow. Thank you very much as well. Uh, also known as the girl with the Nirvana shirt. Yeah. Nice. All right. See you next time. Happy rotations. <laughs>